it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided, which is translated Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Amen. After all that, well, you have to read back a little bit to see what after all this was, but it was the birth of Isaac, and Isaac had grown up to be a boy, and, he, and Abraham had made a treaty with Abimelech. So if you just look back in the passages that went before, you see what the, what the writer's saying. After all of this that went before, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. Abraham, we just read, said, here I am. Um, is God calling your name? He knows, he knows your name. John 10, the good shepherd knows your name and he calls you by your name. To, is God calling your name? Good thing to listen for this weekend. Is God testing you? The passage says God was testing Abraham. Abraham's response was, here, here I am. What's your response? <laughs> Call me later. Text me, send me a text. I'm busy right now. No, we want, we want to come up on the mountain and we want to be listening to God. He might be calling our name. He might be testing us. You see, climbing mountains is a test. Um, the climb itself is always a test. It's hilly, uneven trails usually, uh, when there are trails. Especially near the top of the mountain, there are false summits and you think you're at the top got to go a little further to get on and you don't want to go any further you're tired you think that's the top and yet your goal is to get to the summit and you, you keep you keep going the top is is only halfway because you have to descend the descent often is more difficult than the ascent more people die off coming off of mount everest than going up mount everest mm -hmm. that is that's the way it is with cycling too you go up the hill yes and then you think you're at the top and you yes. got another set Yes. And then you got another stretch yes. after that. And the, and the legs are burning. That's, that's BC Hills. <laughs> yes, BC Hills. And the descent is, da is relatively dangerous. Awesome. Go very fast. Yes. <laughs> that's life, isn't it? It can be climbing, it can be cycling, it can be lots of things. But it's like that. Um, sometimes, sometimes the descent and the coming down off of things is, is even is even harder. I don't know if you heard about this 80-year-old Japanese mountaineer. His name is Yoshiro Mira. He just climbed Mount Everest at 80. Now, there's a backstory to that. He climbed it when he was a younger man. He's the man who skied Everest in the 70s, climbed to the top, skied off of Mount Everest, if you can imagine. And someone, he climbed it when he was 70, so he's the oldest man to, to climb Everest. And then somebody, some Sherpa from Nepal climbed it, and so he had to go back and, and, and climb it when he was 80, 80 years old, if you can even imagine. So he's a very incredible man. He said, I almost died on the descent. He said, I lost strength in my legs and I could not move. When you get old, you get tired. <laughs> but the descent, the descent is difficult, okay? Some of us are descending. We, we've peaked and, and we're going back down. It's not easy on the downside. God said to Abraham, now, Mr. Mira it was, it was 80. Abraham was over 100, well over 100. Take your son. Your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'll point out to you. Man, it was a tall order, wasn't it? A sober command. Go sacrifice your son. And Abraham obeyed. It said he rose early in the morning, got all the provisions together. I just read that to you, so I won't say that again. They traveled three days' journey. It said that they took some coals of fire with them. Is there still fire in your belly for the Lord? Are you still carrying the fire? Are you keeping it, are you keeping the coals burning? That's why we come to Ashram a lot of times. We want the fire to still be there. And we have to attend to that fire. They didn't want that fire to go out over three days, get up there, and then there wasn't any way to start a fire. It wasn't an easy way. And so are we carrying the fire? in us? Are we carrying the fire of Jesus uh, with us? Well, uh, Isaac carried the, the wood, and Abraham took it in his hand, the fire uh, and the knife, and the father and the son climbed together. I love that imagery. Here's dad and son, you know, working their way up to the summit of, of this mountain. My dad got me into mountain climbing, and dad, when dad's 95 now, but when he was 81, 
climb the highest mountain in Colorado, Mount Elbert, 14,433 feet. Did it in, a, in one day. We had a great father-son experience. We, we stretched that over three days as we camped and acclimated to the altitude, but, but we summited on 7,799, I remember. My son and I have climbed some significant mountains in the world today. He was a naval officer. He's very fit. He called me one time. He was, he was in East Africa uh, uh, living in Djibouti. He was still in the Navy, and he called me and said, Dad, we've always wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Why don't you get a plane ticket and come over here and let's climb Kili? So we took seven days, and we Whoa. climbed Mount Kilimanjaro together. It was a wonderful father-son climb, lots of time to talk and walk and, and visit with each other along, along the way. Here's Abraham and Isaac taking a walk like that, taking a hike up a mountain, lots of time to talk, lots of time to share and get acquainted, and they're going up onto a mountain, father and son. Isaac said to his dad, Dad, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide the lamb. Or as the message, uh, Eugene Peterson's uh, translation says, God will see to it. God will see to it. God will provide the lamb. It's the first time... Uh, that this name, Jehovah Jireh, or attribute of God is ever used in the Bible, the Lord will provide. God will provide for you, Christian. The Lord will supply. You believe that? I hope we believe it. The Lord will supply. Maybe your 401k is cut in half. It's a 201k or, or something. Maybe you've lost pension or retirement in the recession. Maybe you've lost your job. Uh, maybe uh, your home or mortgage is in jeopardy. This is all over the United States. Maybe your income and savings are inadequate. The Lord will provide. The Lord's going to provide. The Lord will provide. That's what this scripture says. Provision follows obedience. Provision follows obedience. Blessing follows testing. Right? You all know these things. Obey God, and God will see to it. And walk on into his provision. You don't stop walking. <laughs> you walk on into it. God has walked all your tomorrows. God has already provided. You walk on into his provision. Right? Sometimes, after you obey, but before you can see it. Yeah? A? Eh? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. After you obey, but before you can see it. So Isaac and Abraham keep climbing together, and they arrive at the place where God had led them. And Abraham built this altar. This is this is this was this was significant hiking and walking, climbing up a mountain, particularly over a hundred years old. They laid the wood in order. They bound Isaac and put him on top of the wood. Abraham took the knife to kill his son, still being obedient to God. Still obeying, he didn't see. Still obeying, didn't see the lamb yet. <laughs> After he had obeyed, but before he had seen God's provision, continued to obey, to walk in, to walk by faith, to continue to walk in it. And then the angel of the Lord called his name, and Abraham said, "Here I am. I'm listening. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for you know that I, I now I know that you fear God. You fearlessly fear God." seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Every year, um, the entering class at Asbury College uh, has a class name and a class scripture. It's been true for 110 years. Dr. E. Stanley Jones graduated from there in 1906. All three of our daughters graduated from Asbury College, and so they all entered the college, and their class had a name, and it had a class scripture. Candace, our oldest daughter, was in the redeemed class, let the redeemed of the Lord save. So, our daughter Mallory was in the vessel class. Lord, let me be, a, be your vessel. And our youngest daughter Savannah was in the fearless class. Their class verse is Isaiah 58, 8 and 9, which includes, you shall cry out and the Lord will answer, here I am, so be fearless for God. <laughs> That's a good one. Faith is not what I see with my eyes. Faith is what we believe in our hearts. Abram couldn't see the land but he still obeyed. You with me? Yeah. Okay. Um, that blessing follows the testing. The provision follows the obedience. 
So then Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught by its horns in the thicket and he took the ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham named that place Jehovah Jireh, or God will see to it. That is where we get the saying, on the mountain of God it shall be provided. James, would you just pray, we're on the mountain right here. Would you just pray for a second, just take a short time to pray that on the mountain right now, on the Ashram Summit, that God will provide. Can we just pray okay. that pray for all of us? Dear Lord, I pray that you move powerfully and mightily in your way, Lord. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you comfort us and protect us this weekend. And um, you raise up leaders and you raise up your voices to worship you. And I pray that a lot of young people young and old get touched this weekend and I pray that people who are invited and other people invited that were lean towards coming actually show up the other days or tonight and they don't know you Lord that they come to know you as well and dear Lord I know about that song everybody needs compassion where you can move mountains oh dear Lord I pray that you can move this spiritual mountain in our lives anyone who's struggling Emotionally, physically, mentally, or spiritually, Lord. Amen. Amen. On the mountain of God, it will be provided. You're up on the mountain at the ashram. Okay? Visualize that. Imagine that. You're up on the mountain. And here it will be provided. Maybe he's going to meet your need that you've expressed. I took some notes. wasn't to publish anything. It was just to kind of remember what you said. Some of you need healing. Some of you need deep healing. And on the mountain of God, it's going to be provided. Some of you need restoration, restoration of relationships, restoration of your health, restoration of energy and physical strength. On the mountain of God, that's going to be, that's going to be provided. Um, I think we can claim that particular verse. The angel uh, called again to Abraham and he said, The Lord declares that because you've done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring. Uh, they will be as the stars of the heavens, and they will be as the sand on the seashore. Your offspring will defeat their enemies, and in your offspring shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Provision follows obedience. Keep obeying, brothers and sisters. Blessing follows testing. If you're being tested, blessing is on that. Someone has said when you go through the fires of human suffering, uh, it's because you're going to come out on the other side uh, where God can use you more mightily as his purified instrument. Fanny Crosby, was it Fanny Crosby that said, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but trust and obey. Um, God came down. God came down so that we could go up. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Um, God is, is our Lord. God is a personal God. Jesus said to, to call God Daddy. And the Father wants to provide. And He will provide. In each time that we're together, I'd like for you to ask a couple of questions of these scriptures. Because I know you'll go back and you'll read Genesis 22 again. I want you to ask these kinds of questions every time. Where's Jesus in the story? This is an Old Testament story. That Where is Jesus in the story? The sacrifice? The lamb? Where's Jesus in the story? And secondly, where do you need Jesus in your story? That's a really important question. Some of you have a close walk with him. Some of you have expressed you'd like to have a closer walk with him. Where do I need Jesus in my story? Healing? Deep wounds? Issues that are way, way down there? A real brokenness in my life? We all have brokenness, but where do I need Jesus in my story? You have a story. But where do you need to, to find Jesus in, in your story? I called my little mom today and make sure she was doing all right. And uh, usually she doesn't talk very long in the hospital, on, the, on the phone because she's 95. And, um, she, I said, remember, we're up here in Canada at the ashram. Oh, yeah, I prayed that you'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good clarity for a 95-year-old mom. Uh, usually she says, where are you? <laughs> um, 
where where is Jesus in the story, and where do I need Jesus in my story? I need my little prayer warrior mom to continue to pray for me. Oh, do I need that? She always has, and, and uh, she still is. Um, where, where do we need Jesus in our story? Where have we gotten so dependent upon ourselves? Where have we tried to provide for ourselves? Where have we tried to do it ourselves? You with me? Where have we tried to control it? Where have we tried to determine it? Where have we tried to build on something that, that we thought was the foundation, but it wasn't the foundation? The church is one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. Where, where do we need to go back and find Jesus in our story? Let's pray. God, life has its ups and downs and uh, sometimes that's just literally uh, true as we, we walk up and down and ascend and descend and, and go through um, difficult times and, and uh, better times. Um, the mountains that that around Jerusalem uh, and around Vancouver remind us that uh, all is not easy, all is not level, all is not flat. But we want to obey you. We want to obey your voice. This weekend, some of us are just listening for that voice, for new direction, for new meaning, for new purpose. Others of us are not going to even speak until uh, you refill us and renew us and re-energize us. Father, I pray that you'll, you'll take these stories and others and um, remind us that you come down to us. And there just isn't any other way. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray a prayer of thanks.